So now all this builds up to being able to look at a different type of series, which is called a binomial series. So most of the different series and sequences that we look at are arithmetic or geometric because those are very nice to work with. So remember that the arithmetic sequence is a sequence that has a constant difference and the geometric sequence is a sequence that has a constant ratio. And so the series is where you add the terms of a sequence together. So arithmetic series is adding the terms of a arithmetic sequence, geometric series is adding the terms from a geometric sequence. And we have nice formulas for those. And there are lots of different types of sequences. And so one we're going to look at is the binomial. And we're actually going to be looking at the binomial series. And what the binomial series is, think about the term binomial. You, that is a term in math, which means you have an expression with two terms. Bi meaning two. And it's like a polynomial right? Polynomial means many terms. A monomial is just one single term. So these are binomials and we're raising them to different powers. So let's take a look at some of these different binomial powers. So this first one here, this is just a plus b to the zero. Well, that's not very exciting. Anything to the zero is just one. Here we have a plus b to the one. Again, it's a little bit more exciting, but not too much to do. This is just a plus b. And then the next one here, a plus b squared. If we do that, we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Remember, this is coming from we cannot apply the squared to both sides. This is just saying this is a plus b times itself, a plus b. So we People like to use the FOIL term, but really you're just distributing the A and then distributing the B. So you end up getting you know, A squared plus AB plus BA plus B squared. And so you combine the, the AB and the BA, it's the same thing. So it's 2AB. And so the next one here, A plus B cubed, well, you're really doing A plus B times a plus b times a plus b. So you're doing a plus b times itself three times. And now we already did a plus b times a plus b. And so when you multiply two of them together, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this is still times a plus b. Now I won't get too much into the, the multiplication of this, but we're capable of doing it. All we do is just distribute the a in to each of the terms, and then we distribute the b in to each of the terms. So it's just distributing again. And so what you end up getting is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So if you want to verify that, you can actually expand this all out, distribute the a in, distribute the b in. It's very good practice for algebra and combining like terms. And then I won't go through actually doing the a plus b to the fourth, because then we would have to take the previous one, the a cubed plus all the way down to b cubed. We have to take that and multiply it by a plus b. So it's a lot of terms, but let's write it out. This would be a to the fourth plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the fourth. And so when we take a look at what's happening here, there are some patterns that we can recognize. So first off, let's count the number of terms. So comparing each of these, the number of terms here, this is just first one is one term. The next one is two terms. The next one is three terms. The next one is four terms. And the last one is five terms. And so I invite you to pause for a moment 
and try to identify some patterns that you recognize here, whether it's patterns in the number of terms or patterns in the expansions themselves or patterns in the exponents, patterns in the coefficients. So pause for a little bit and try to find or recognize any patterns that you see. So pause here and come back after you look at some of these patterns. And so now that you have looked at and try to recognize some patterns, let's summarize some of these and we'll just leave this space blank. That was kind of for, for you to write down what you recognized or what you saw. The main points to take out, and there's no right or wrong observations that you made when you were doing it on your own. So there are, look at the number of terms compared to a plus b to the n. So we're looking at in general a plus b to the n. So the thing that's changing here in each of these terms is the exponent. And so we're looking at how the number of terms relates to the exponent. So when the exponent was 0, there was one term. When the exponent was 1, there was two terms. When the exponent was 2, there were three terms, and so on. And so there are always one more. The number of terms is one more than the exponent. So there are always n plus 1 terms. And if you look at each term's powers, so what that means is if we look at, let's look at the, the last one because there's a lot of things to look at. So if we look at the different terms, so you know, a to the fourth is a term, 4a cubed times b to the, actually that's 1, is another term, and so on. If you look at the exponents on the a and the b, they always add to n. So if you look at a cubed b to the 1, add the cubed, the 3 and the 1, that's 4. The a squared and the b squared, the 2 plus 2 is 4. a to the 1 times b to the 3, add those, that's 4 again. And same thing for the first, that's a to the fourth, b to the fourth, that's 4. So the powers all sum to n. And if we look at the sequence here, what's happening in particular with the a's and with the b's, so let's say if we're looking at the a term, so let's call that the first term, this is a to the fourth. So it's starting with a to the n. Same thing here with the cubed. This is a cubed. Same thing with the a plus b squared. This is a squared. So the power on the first term starts with the power of the binomial, the n in this case. So the powers of the first term is n, and it decreases each term. It decreases in particular by 1 each term. If you look at the a plus b to the fourth, this is a to the fourth, and then it drops down to a cubed, and this drops down to a squared, a to the one, and then actually it's a to the zero, but that's one, so we don't write it. And so the power starts with you know a to the fourth, and then it drops down all the way. And you can also think of it, the b term, in different ways. One way of thinking about it is that the b term starts with the power of, well, zero on the first term, because this is just a to the fourth, but there's b to the zero, which is just one, and this increases, again, by one each term. So if you look at the first one's b to the zero, the next one's b to the one, the next one's b to the two, the next one's b to the three, and the last one's b to the four. You can also think of it as on the right-hand side, it starts with b to the four, and then that decreases by one each time. So it goes down to b cubed, to b squared, to b one. So two ways of thinking about it. And now, the most amazing part are the coefficients. So the coefficients of a plus b to the fourth is, are one, and then four, and then six, and then four, and then one. For a plus b to the cubed, the coefficients are one, then three, then three, then one. And so these coefficients, it comes from the combinations that we looked at previously. So the whole 10c3 or 10c5, that kind of stuff. Where, if you take a look, so let's take a look at the a plus b to the fourth. If we take a look, the coefficients of that are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Taking a look at this triangle here, and this triangle has a lot of amazing qualities, but what it really is, it's called Pascal's triangle, but really Pascal is a, is a Frenchman who found or discovered this triangle much many years after the Chinese and the Hindu and Arabic cultures already have been working with it. But the way that this triangle works is that each number in the inside of the triangle is the sum of the 
two numbers to its left and to the right above. So for example, uh, looking at the arrows here, if you look at this row 14641, we have to get the one, the next row, you take the one and the four and you add them together to get five. You take the next one, it's four and the six, add them together to get 10. And then again, six and the four, add that together to get 10, four and the one, add that together to get five and so on to get the the next row to get that 20 it's 10 plus 10. So you're just adding those like consecutive terms together. And so this triangle starts with row zero and it starts with just one and the next one is just one and one. And then it kind of branches off the outsides are always one because if you think about it, you're just adding you know nothing over there which is zero and then one is one. And then you just keep going down one plus one is two and then one plus two is three and so on and so on and just builds off of itself. But if you take a look, here is row zero. This is row zero. And then we have row one, and then row two, row three, row four. Now we were talking about the coefficients on a plus b to the fourth. That's one, four, six, four, one. One, four, six, four, one. If we look and see, oh, the fourth row is one, four, six, four, one. Maybe that's a coincidence. Looking at a plus b cubed, the coefficients on that are 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. Looking at row 3 here, that's 1, 3, 3, 1. So the coefficients of the binomial expansion are the exact same numbers in this order of this Pascal's triangle. And so this will tell us how to do these large expansions. We could figure out how to do a plus b to the fourth or how to do x plus y to the seventh by using this idea of Pascal's triangle. And so just keep going down with all these rows. This goes all the way down to row nine. And not only do we have this relationship with this triangle and the coefficient of the binomial expansion, but we have this relationship with these values in the row of the Pascal's triangle and combination numbers. So taking a look at row nine here, this is nine C zero. This is, these are combinations. These are actually the combination values. So if we look at nine C zero, that's one. If we look at nine C one, we'll see some of these in the calculator. That's nine, nine C two should be 36. 9C3 is 84 and so on. And this goes all the way up to 9C9. Let's, if you don't believe it, let's just see it in the calculator. We have NCR, so we're doing NCR, 9 comma 0, close parenthesis, that's 1, okay. Do the next one, NCR 9 comma 1, that's 9. Next one, NCR 9 comma 2. Next one, NCR 9 comma 3. And then go all the way up. Let's just go to NCR 9 comma 9. So we get 1, 9, 36, 84, all the way down to 1. So let's just take a look. 1, 9, 36, 84. 1, 9, 36, 84. And you could keep going. This should be 9C4, 9C5, 9C6, all the way down to 9C9. And so this is just another amazing result from Pascal's triangle. And so what this means, there's this relationship between the values in the row and combinations, but there's also this relationship between the values in the rows and the coefficients of the binomial expansion. So that means that we can get the coefficients of the binomial expansion using the combination values. So using the combination values, let's just verify again with five. So row in row five, we're doing five C zero, that should be one. If we do five C one, that should be five. Five C two, that should be 10. Five C three should also be 10. Five C four should also be five. And then five C five should be one. So I, I invite you to check this in your calculator. And again, to look at the rows in row five, that's one, five, 10, 10, five, one, 
1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. When we do all the combinations where n is 5 and we're changing what the r is, this is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And so we can sort of create a table to find what the binomial expansion is of, say, a plus b to the 5. So the way this works is we have the coefficients listed out here. This is 5c0, the 5c1, 5c2, 5c3, 5c4, and 5c5. So these are the, the fixing the n in the combination calculation, and we're increasing the r by 1 by starting at 0. And so that's where these coefficients come from. And then we have, we start with a to the 5, because that's what the n is. So we're, we're saying n is 5 here. And so we're just start with a to the 5, and we decrease that exponent by 1 each time until we get all the way down to 0. And then for the b, we start with b to the 0, and we increase by 1 each time until we get all the way to b to the 5. And the way it works is that each of these, the 1, the a to the 5, and the b to the 0, these are all part of the first term. So this is all multiplying together. And then we add each of the terms together. So we kind of like multiply down and add across on this table. So what we have is that we have a plus b to the fifth power. Never did you think you'd be able to do this so quickly. We have 1 times a to the 5 times b to the 0, which is 1. So this is 1 times a to the 5 times 1, which is just a to the 5. Plus 5 times a to the 4 times b to the 1 plus 10 times a to the 3 times b squared plus 10 times a squared times b cubed plus 5 times a to the 1 times b to the 4 plus 1 times a to the 0 which is 1 times b to the 5 so all this times b to the 5 is just b to the 5. And so this is the expansion of a plus b to the fifth power. Normally, we would have to do a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. We'd have to do that five times, which would take a very long time. So let's try another example. There's a, a little bit more going on. It is still to the fifth power. So we have the n is five here. And then the a and the b, let's actually write those off to the side here. The a is 2x and the b is negative 5. So it's still the same idea. We have our coefficients listed across. So we have our coefficients are the same coefficients as we had. It's 5c0, 5c1, 5c2, so on. So this is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Let's try to space this out a little bit better. All right, so it's spaced out a little bit better now. And we are raising each term to its power. So we're doing a, which is the 2x, to the fifth power. And then we're doing a, which is the 2x, to the fourth power. So we're just decreasing the power of the 2x by 1 each time. So 2x cubed, 2x squared, 2x to the 1, and 2x to the 0. And then we start with b to the 0. So the b is the negative 5. So we're doing b to the 0, or negative 5 to the 0, then negative 5 to the 1. So we're increasing that exponent each time until we get all the way to b, or negative 5, to the fifth power. And now all we do is we add across and multiply down. So we have the expansion here of 2x minus 5 to the fifth power is equal to 2 to the fifth power is 32. So we're doing 32x to the fifth times 1 times negative 5 to the 0 is 1. So this is just 32 times x to the fifth. So the next one here doing 5 times 2x to the fourth. So if you punch some of these in your calculator, you're doing 5 times 2 to the fourth. So just multiplying all the number parts together. 5 times 2 to the fourth, which is 16, times 5 is 80, times the negative 5 to the 1, which is just negative 5, is negative 400. So this would actually be subtraction here instead of adding, because this would end up being negative 400x to the fourth. Plus, the next one here is 10 times 
2 cubed times negative 5 squared. Punch that into the calculator. Those numbers all multiply together are 2,000. And then the x is cubed. And then next this is going to be subtraction again because there's an odd power on the negative 5. So this is 10 times 2 squared times negative 5 cubed. So this ends up being negative 5,000. And this is x squared. And then the next one here is 5 times 2 times negative 5 to the fourth power, which this all ends up putting in the calculator 6,250. And the power on the x is 1. And this last one here, the 1 is just 1. 2 times x to the 0 is just 1. So this is 1 times 1, which is all 1, times negative 5 to the fifth power. Negative 5 to the fifth power is negative 3,125. So this is the binomial expansion of 2x minus 5 to the fifth. So this is an incredibly powerful tool right here that we can use for the binomial expansions. For the sake of time, we won't go through the process of expanding this one, but I invite you to try it out. I will put on the screen here, I will write out what the result should be. And then if you want, you can try and go through this process and check to see if what you got is correct. So there's the result. If you want to check that, you can and try to work through that process. But now let's take a look at some problem solving ideas. So going through this process can be kind of cumbersome. So a lot of times what you may be asked are certain pieces of the binomial expansion. For example, if we want to take a look and see your understanding of the binomial expansion, we can see how many terms are there in the expansion of 2w plus 7y to the eighth power. Well, the n here is 8, so there's n plus 1 terms, so that means that there are 9 terms in this expansion. Just like with the previous example that I wrote above, there are 7 terms here if you count them out, and then the one with the fifth power, there are six terms if you count those terms out. So this next one is asking what is the exponent of w in the third term here? So we're not going to fully go out and write the entire expansion, but what this expansion would sort of start to look like is you would have, so n is 7 here. So we start with 7c0, and then we have the first part, which is 4. So this would be 4 to the seventh power times negative w to the zero power, so that's the first term, plus the next term would be 7c1 times four to the sixth power, so that decreases by one, times negative w to the first power, plus, so this is the first term, second term, and now the third term, the moment of truth, is 7c2 times four to the fifth power times negative w to the second power plus, and then it keeps going on. So the exponent, what we're looking for, of the w on the third term is 2. So the answer here is 2. I mean, really, you don't need the other parts, the 7c0 or the 4 to the 7th. You're really just thinking about, okay, w starts with exponent of 0, and then you add 1 each time. So the second term has exponent of 1 on w, so the third term has exponent of 2 on w. But I just wanted to write out what the different parts are just to reinforce the ideas of what the binomial expansion looks like. And the last term here is that one term of this expansion contains m to the 6. So we want to see what is the exponent of q in that term. So we know that the exponents of the first term and the second term, so the m and the q, whatever the exponents on m and q, have to add to 9. So exponents add to 9. So what that means is that for the term with m to the 6, the matching term would be the matching term would have q to the 3 because it has to add to 9. So pretty much you would have whatever the stuff is in front, you would have m to the 6 times q to the 3 because they have to add to 9. Just like looking at this expansion above where the n was 6 on each of the exponents of the x and the y. So you have x to the 5, y to the 1 that adds to 6. 
and explaining this here makes me realize I actually had a typo. This should be on the next one, y squared. So I apologize if you're actually trying to work that one out and you're trying to figure out why that one's y squared. It's a typo. But it should say x to the fourth y squared, so that adds to 6. x cubed, y cubed, adds to 6. x squared, y to the fourth, adds to 6. So on. So the exponents always add to 6 when the n is 6. This one, the n is 9, so the exponents always add to 9. And if we want to use our fancy sigma notation, what's really going on here, if we have u plus v to the n, we're doing n choose 0. So we start with nc0, and then we start with u to the n, v to the 0. And then we essentially are adding 1 to the combination part. So it's n c0 and then it goes nc1 nc2 nc3 and we're subtracting one in the exponent of the u and then we're adding one in the exponent of the v so really what that is you can see we have different parts here the n is the end of the exponent and then the part that's changing is pretty much everything else the exponents and the part of the combination so they're all changing in unison together and they're all the same thing because whatever on the next one, whatever the v to the exponent is, that's how much you subtract to the exponent of u from the n. And that's also the second part of the combination. So we call that r. And so the sigma notation is sigma, which is sum from r equals 0, so we're starting with r0, to n, that's the index that we're going to end at. And we have this formula here.